Matthew in Fayetteville, actually Matthew's talking to us, and he tells us that his net worth dropped 13%, approximately $200,000 over the last year, even after saving 30% or $75,000. Am I doing something wrong, or is that just the nature of the current market? I know it's just it's just submitting my losses if I get out now, but it's tough. Talk me off the ledge. Matthew, so, what the heck are you investing in? <laughs> so, yeah, in all seriousness, we, we do need to ask that question because when it, when it says, is this the nature of the current market, like what market are you in? Because uh, the, the S&P in the past 12 months is up about uh, just shy of 22%. I think it's 21.9 at this point. Yeah. And, and so in all seriousness, uh, Matthew, we're, we're really wondering, like, what are you invested in? Where, where are your dollars going that you've seen it go down that much? But, but then we, we do kind of want to shift this and say, even for, for people out there who are not Matthew, who are in this situation right now, people have been in this situation before. We've seen this movie before. And so we want to talk about, like, unless you're just in something that you just need to get completely out of, and we do understand the nature of locking in losses and all the challenges there, but unless that is the case, let's talk about how do we deal with markets when they're ugly and what decisions do we make and not make at those times. Janet, I have to think in Matthew's particular situation, maybe he has been lured into some investment that he thought was going to do well and, and obviously didn't do well right. when a broad-based market-type investment investment might have done better for him over that period of time. But I think it's very important that that number one, you don't chase the hot dot, you don't look for that get rich quick uh, investment that might be touted to you by someone anyone out there. Uh, you know, a lot of people get lured by that a lot of people really are attracted by, oh, wow, look at what this did. And it's not really probably going to do that again. So what you've got to do is you've got to have a very long term perspective. It's really really never about your net worth. It is about your capacity to meet your income need at retirement. And I think a lot of people lose track of that because they think that I just need to turn $1,000 into 2000 and then I need to turn two into four as quickly as I possibly can. And that's never a formula for getting financially independent. Well, and the other thing about net worth and, and why that's really in your retirement income planning, an irrelevant number. It is relevant in different topics, but not in your retirement income planning. If you think about it, your net worth includes things like the value of your home. Well, are you going to turn that into an income stream? You, you will have a place to live based on that, but is it going to provide income for you? So we don't really, it, your net worth, again, it is important in other conversations, but when we're talking about planning for retirement, it is way more, John, as you said, it is way more about the income than the net worth. Yeah, Matthew doesn't tell us how old he is, and, and frankly, if he's a younger person, uh, then a downturn in the market actually is an opportunistic thing right. that, that he could look at. But let's talk about this from the perspectives of someone who is ready to retire. I think that our general Wealth Ready to Retire process and the bucketing strategy that we employ to help people understand and navigate the vagarities of the market uh, is really appropriate to talk about at this time. And, and a great example of that is that we're about 15 years out from 2008. 2008 was one of the worst periods of time in our comp uh, country's economic history. We had a big uh, downturn in the in the uh, financial markets. We had a big downturn in the housing market. Uh, there was all kinds of financial upheaval going on in 2008. But since 2008 to 2023, where are we? Well, you look at the S&P 500, it's up about an average of 10% per year since 2008. And Janet, I think that is the key. Uh, in, in the last year, the Dow and the S&P have been up. Uh, and again, to Matthew's question, uh, if, you're, if you're not broadly invested in the market then, and you're highly concentrated in maybe a volatile stock or something mm -hmm. of that nature, mm -hmm. and we're just speculating here about Matthew's situation. But if you're doing that, then you're putting all, all your money on red. Uh, on on the roulette wheel. Yeah, yeah. So when we when we look at John, the reason 
that you were talking about, you know, where we are since 2008, most people look at their investments as one pool of money. And we really believe it is critically important to segment that as you get closer to retirement, because there are dollars that you're going to use in the first five years of retirement that can be handled very differently than the dollars that you're going to use 10, 15, 20, and 25 years into retirement. So retirement, in terms of your investments, it is not a stop sign. You may stop going to work, but you don't stop investing for at least some long-range portion because you don't need all of the money in day, on day one. So when you look at, like, again, going back to the example of where we are 15 years down the road from 2008, it's a blip on the radar. It doesn't really matter as far as, like, in 2008 what happened. And if you had been at that point, at the point of retirement, it would have mattered if you had had all of your eggs in one basket and everything was down 40% like the S&P was. But if you segment those assets, then if the segment that is more growth oriented is down, it doesn't even matter if you're already in retirement. So I, I do think it's safe to say, even though we don't know how Matthew is, is uh, really invested, I do think it's safe to say that there is not a significant amount of diversification or a focus on the, the time segmentation. And again, Matthew, you may not be old enough for the time segmentation to be as important, but the closer you get to retirement, the more critical that really is. Janet, there is a, a kind of a close corollary to the fastest four minutes in investing that can be heard on the radio later in this hour. But if you don't subscribe to the fastest four minutes in investing, you can text FAST to the, word, uh, to the number 501-381-381. 5228, the word FAST to 501-381-5228. We talk about this in terms of that old story of the man who thought himself to death. And that's, I think, kind of where Matthew is. Matthew ought to maybe consider firing his financial advisor if he, somebody <laughs> recommended this to him. And he's in this kind of shape with the market doing what it's done. And if you're your own financial advisor, Matthew, maybe you need a financial advisor. <laughs> 